Welcome back. Let's handle the timer in this particular video. It's going to be much more simple than you think it is. So the whole logic behind it is nothing but as soon as I type my first letter, it should start this particular timer. So how are we going to do that? Very easily. So now that we have this handle input function, we can easily trigger any other function or any other timer that we want to as soon as the user starts typing. But to do that, let's create another function that will start our timer. So I'm going to name it as start timer and it's going to be a simple arrow function. So first of all, I am going to set the timer started as true because as soon as the user presses something, the timer started boolean should become true so that this particular thing at least disappears. So first of all, let's handle that. So st uh, set state and timer started is going to be true. Superb, this is amazing. And now what I'm going to do is define a timer. So I'm going to define a timer using set interval. So for us, the time will be 1000 milliseconds or one second. So let me tell you how to do that. Const timer is equal to set interval. So there are two functions set interval and set timeout. So those two basically handle with these particular things. Set timeout is nothing but uh, it runs that particular piece of code after the given period of time and set interval runs that piece of code again and again after that given time interval. So the first argument in the set interval is the function that we want to run after the given time. And the second argument is the given time itself. So I am going to make it as thousand. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I am going to, uh, let's say, let before even doing anything else, firstly, after every second, I want to at least update my time remaining. So what I'm going to do, very simple, this dot set state as time remaining to be this dot state dot time remaining minus one. Very, very simple. So this was something super simple. But what we also are forgetting here is what if it passes the 60 seconds? In case it passes the 60 second, it will go into minus and then that would not be good. So for that, to handle that, let's put a simple if statement saying if this dot state dot time remaining is let's say greater than zero, then do this. Let's copy and paste this inside here. And otherwise, what if it becomes equal to or less than zero? Otherwise, simple. I am going to clear the interval. Clear the interval means to stop set interval from running. So it's very, very simple. Clear interval. And it requires the key, the number of that particular, um, that particular loop that we are running. So for that, it is going to be inside our timer. So this is something super, super simple. So let's test it out whether it's working or not. So let me start typing. My name is mother, but it did not work. I want you to guess why it did not work. This is very, very simple. Trust me, guys. Why did it not work? I hope that you were able to find it. It's because we never called the start timer. So it is very, very simple. How do we do that? Inside our handle user input. So handle user input is something that is going to get called as soon as we start typing here. So inside our function handle user input, I am just going to start the timer if in case the timer is not yet started. How to do that? Very simple, a simple if statement if this dot state dot timer started is equal to equal to false or a simple way to do that would be if not this dot state dot timer started this means that if the timer started is false or the timer has not yet started then i am going to simply call the start timer this dot start timer and now you are going to see a magic as soon as i start typing here the timer started and the, the and the message also disappeared so this was it for this video we implemented the timer function here see you in the next video bye bye